Nokia phones, especially their budget and mid-range ones, share this cohesiveness in terms of their design, relative performance, and overall user experience. Maybe that's for the better, or worse, it's not up to me to say. Anyway, the Nokia 2.4 does not really evoke a sense of innovation as the Finnish company did not bother to bring about any changes from its predecessor, in the design aspect that is. So how does this iterative upgrade of a phone perform? Allow me to answer that in this review. Like I said earlier, there is hardly any deviation in the design language of the Nokia 2.4 from that of the Nokia 2.3, let alone an overhaul. It is still sturdy and feels super nice on the hands. For what it's worth, the phone is much more premium for the price. As expected, it has a polycarbonate body with a 3D nano-textured cover at the back. This offers a nice grip and even though it's not a compact phone, I had no trouble holding it on. Moving on, there's a 3.5mm headphone jack at the top frame alongside a primary microphone. The volume and power buttons are placed on the right, while there's the trademark dedicated Google Assistant button on the left. Finally, you'll find a secondary mic, a USB port, and the speaker grill at the bottom. Like always, the Google Assistant button cannot be remapped natively, though you can with a third-party app like Button Mapper. You can already trigger Google Assistant using your voice or simply swiping from the bottom edge of the screen. So if you ask me, having a dedicated button feels redundant at this point. Alright, getting to the display, the Nokia 2.4 now has a bigger 6.5 inches IPS LCD panel with the same old HD Plus resolution and a teardrop notch. For its sub-15,000 price point, the inferior HD resolution is not that surprising. But I must say, looking at the display contents with a fair enough distance, it actually does not look that bad. But having it close to you, like you would normally, one can notice the lack of sharpness in the images. Moreover, in its default setting, the display is a fair bit on the warm side too. But it's not something to worry about as you can easily dial it down to your preference under the white balance option in the settings. Moving on, the Nokia 2.4 can get bright enough for indoors and cloudy outdoor situations, but you will struggle to view the phone's content under direct sunlight. The performance on the Nokia 2.4 also sees a much-required upgrade as it comes with the octa-core Helio P22 chipset, while the Nokia 2.3 came with a quad-core Helio A22 chipset. Because of that, the user experience is considerably better. The image processing is faster and so are other assorted actions. But with just mere 2 GB of RAM and only about 700 MB of free RAM, I time and again witness stutters and lags during gaming or even light multitasking sessions. The system UI would also briefly misbehave when certain heavy apps are in the memory. Furthermore, out of 32 GB, 11 GB is occupied by the system itself. So I would highly encourage you to get the 3 GB RAM and 64 GB model instead. Now, talking about gaming, light games work perfectly fine. Similarly, high-end games like Call of Duty Mobile runs fine under low graphics and high frame rates. PUBG Mobile Lite is also playable even in smooth graphics and extreme frame rates, but your gameplay will be subject to frequent stutters. Moreover, the touch response on the display would give up on me at times, making my gameplay experience abysmal. As for software, the stock Android 10 on the Nokia 2.4 is also a part of the Android 1 program, thus promising you with 2 years of software and up to 3 years of security updates. At the time of writing this review, my unit of the Nokia 2.4 has already received September security patch, so that's great. Moving on, now let's talk about the cameras. Here, you get the same dual wear camera setup at the back and a single front-facing lens on the Nokia 2.4. As a result, the camera performance is more or less the similar as its predecessor. Images from the primary sensor can look pretty good if you get ample lighting. They are fairly sharp and have plenty of details to enjoy and the colors are not all that bad either. Photos do tend to look a bit undersaturated and the camera cannot lock in focus fast enough either. Turning on HDR does help a bit in terms of the colors, but it's a hit or a miss. Most of the time, the difference between HDR and non-HDR images is practically zero, but sometimes it works wonders. Likewise, the 2 megapixel depth sensor is just about average. The edge detection is flawed and at times, the subject can look a bit oversaturated. Nighttime images are not any good either. 
It looks completely hazy and the image is rather soft and full of grains. Surprisingly, there's a dedicated night mode in the camera UI, but as I suspected, it's a complete gimmick and does not improve the image quality in any way. Selfies from the 5 megapixel selfie camera, just like the primary lens, can look okay ish with plenty of ambient light. But for the most part, subjects look pale and lifeless. Software based portrait selfies are not that good either, and the edge detection is rather flawed here too. Okay, in terms of videos, the Nokia 2.4 maxes out at 1080p from both the front and the back cameras. The sensor fails to lock in exposure and the footage comes out very wobbly. Once again, I was surprised to find out the video stabilization feature inside the camera settings, but this was a gimmick as well. Now getting to the battery, the phone has a decent 4500 mAh cell. With light to medium usage, it can easily last you for 2 days and should also get you through your day on heavy usage too. I watched a 2.5 hours movie with full brightness and max volume and it only depleted 22% of the battery. All in all, you can get around 7 to 8 hours of screen on time on this phone. But charging it via the micro USB connection takes a while. Using a 10 watt charger, it took me about 3 hours 5 minutes to fully juice up the phone from 0 to 100%. Likewise, other features of the phone include a circular plastic fingerprint sensor at the back. It is definitely not the fastest one out there and takes almost a second to unlock. Nokia 2.4 also supports face unlock but it's even slower and less secure. Finally, the single firing bottom speaker here is not that great either. The audio from it sounds shallow, incomplete and you won't hear all the details from this. On the contrary, the audio from the 3.5mm headphone jack and the call quality is much better but nothing extraordinary. In conclusion, the Nokia 2.4 is a decent entry-level Android phone whose stock Android experience, seamless design and excellent battery life should speak volumes to many people. However, from a pure performance perspective, there are a lots of better options in the market out there from companies like Xiaomi, Realme, etc. So that was all for our review of the Nokia 2.4. What do you think about the phone? Do let us know in the comments below. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I'll see you in the next one.